How goes the family? Welcome back to Larry's Anything Goes. Hopefully you guys have been having a great day. It's been a crazy last three days, but we're going to continue to do what we have to do all at the same time. So hopefully you guys are having a great day. Today's topic, we'll be talking about something that's near and dear to my heart. Black-owned grocery stores. Not enough of them. And, you know, growing up in the DMV area, if you don't know who that is, that's considered the Washington, D.C., Maryland, Northern Virginia area, um, the parts of the state that's connected to Washington, D.C. from an economical perspective from the beginning and from a tourist perspective from the beginning and, you know, from a, um, you know, events perspective, the whole nine. But one thing that I, you know, like about growing, you know, and I think about like most metropolitan areas around the United States of America, while most um, in the African-American community were only looking for high paying jobs and job security, and at times, I hate to say it, but I'm going to say it, fake political power, because no economic power means no political power, period. Other communities were doing the same thing, but they were purchasing real estate. They were taking advantage of insurance policies. And they were creating sustainable businesses while having good high paying jobs all at the same time so that they could become job creators, not just applying for great high paying jobs. I've been to Asian communities, I've been to Hispanic communities, in some instances I've been to other Caribbean communities, you know, my African diasporan community is from Jamaica, Haiti, Nigeria, you know, um, Americo, Liberians, you know, the list goes on and on. I've been to all these uh, different communities, you know, people from India, Pakistan, you know, like I said, the list goes on and on. Not knocking anybody that makes money moves. It's all about that no matter where you come from, all right? And I've seen a lot of these communities have their own um, grocery store. Even where I grew up in Woodbridge, Virginia, there was an um, African-owned, I don't know if it's still around, grocery store. So, you know, I actually went into it, got some, you know, it's the first time I tried Joel off. Pretty good, you know, but, um, and, they, and I believe the owners there were actually from Nigeria, so it was pretty cool. Um, but I've never had the pleasure of going to an African-American-owned grocery store. So when I came across this article the other day with the headline, Detroit's only black owned grocery store, I had to talk about it. Mr. Uh, Raphael Wright, who is a great local Detroit, Michigan entrepreneur is planning to open what he says will be the first and only grocery store in the city owned by an African-American. I love it. The article stated that two years ago, Mr. Wright started the efforts to increase representation in terms of ownership in Detroit, which is a you know, beautiful thing. Population means nothing if there's no ownership population. All right, um, he raised 47,000 through a GoFundMe, which is a very nice campaign, gathered 70,000 through different forms of funding and used 50,000 of his own money to invest in grocery stores that is considered to be the first ever black owned. Um, in the area and before I go forward, you know, a lot of people that live in places like New York, the DMV, the West Coast are probably like, you know, that's not a lot of money. But the beautiful thing about the Midwest and the South, uh, those two parts of the country where, you know, 70,000, 50,000, 47,000 can go a lot further compared to um, other metropolitan areas around the United States of America. Great example, in the state of Michigan, you can buy a house for under $47,000. You know, the state of Pennsylvania, you can buy, you know, a lot of, there aren't that many states left that you can do this, but you can still do it. You know what I mean? So I think that's a beautiful thing all at the same time. You know what I mean? But I digress. <laughs> Um, I love this reading about this, you know, because it displays how dedicated Mr. Wright is in accomplishing his mission while looking for funding opportunities became relatively easy for Mr. Wright. It wasn't the, sa it wasn't the same for finding an appropriate real estate, uh, any appropriate real estate for the grocery store that he wants to open. After being rejected many times, he currently has uh, proposed a plan for a 5,000 square foot grocery store in Detroit's Island View neighborhood as part of the mixed use development. And one beautiful thing about a state like Michigan, it is a big farming state. You know, people don't realize that when, obviously once you leave Lansing and once you leave um, Detroit um, you know there's a lot of uh, farming communities rural communities so a lot of times you have the opportunity to do business with um, you know your local farmers you know especially if you own a grocery store um, he's also uh, still finding other possible locations especially in underserved communities where usually the real estate is ten times cheaper so you get a little bit more bang for your buck um, now before I go further I must say that mr. Wright's tenacity is amazing and if the, and if you know, these self-interest, and I'm going to say it, self-interest athletes and celebrities would just support 
and fund efforts like this, they would help create more economic opportunities within their community family. This article also stated that while looking for funding opportunities became relatively easy for Mr. Wright, it wasn't the same for fi um, finding an appropriate real estate location. After being rejected many times, he currently has proposed plan for a 5,000 square foot grocery store in Detroit's Island View neighborhood as part of the mixed use development. He's also still finding other possible locations, especially in, uh, like I stated earlier, in underserved communities. So he's, he's making his moves and he's just gonna continuously do what he's doing. I got nothing but love and respect for that. As part of the larger prospect, Mr. Wright aims to bring healthy, fresh foods to um, black communities in a more affordable and accessible way. Because a lot of times urban areas, uh, especially African-American areas, certain instances in um, Hispanic communities, um, they're considered food deserts. And a lot of times, the, you know, the food that they can even purchase at the store isn't the best. Um, that's why it's like a gift and a curse when you see the Whole Foods coming, then you know if you don't own real estate in that area. And even if you do own real estate in the area, you have opportunity of your property um, taxes going up. Because a lot of th times, even when people own a real estate outright, you know, you still got to pay property taxes unless you live in the state of West Virginia. So, um, but, you know, there's certain instances where, okay, the cost of living goes up, so the rent goes up, people can't afford the rent. Um, and it, obviously the real estate goes up and people can't afford to purchase the real estate. And the people that live there, you know, they, if they're not the make money moves people, if they're, the, if they're the 1980s kind of people where they just feel like, hey, I just have a job with my pension, then they have a good opportunity to be gentrified because of property taxes going up. So that's why I said you have to make money moves or you will live broke like a fool in this economy and tomorrow's economy. Just putting it out there, family. All right. Now, um, like I said, it's very um, interesting uh, how he's um, going about doing certain things. He plans on working with the local urban agriculture network to make that possible in regards to bringing more fresh food that it could be. More than just a business, he also believes that the store could serve as a cultural hub and community meeting space. And I can agree with that, um, st those statements more for a couple of reasons. One, I noticed when I went to other cultures, uh, family uh, run slash own establishments, especially grocery stores, restaurants, etc., where people feel more relaxed and at ease. I see nothing wrong with that, and the African American community needs more of their own grocery stores. The end of the article stated that, uh, moreover, that Mr. Wright hopes his initiatives to open his own grocery store in his community will help promote the significance of Black ownership and investing in our own communities. Because in any community, the dollar is supposed to circulate before it leaves the community. Um, essentially, that's how it's supposed to happen. It's supposed to circulate before it le leaves to other communities because eventually it will. And this is essential of group economics family. So Mr. Wright, please keep up the good work. Before I go further, um, I will say that, you know, one thing I remember my um, grandparents, uh, especially my grandfather telling me about, um, you know, making um, money moves back in their day. They said one thing about the barbershop and um, the beauty salon, the church. Um, those are all places a lot of times not only people would worship and get a haircut or whatnot, but it literally is like where people would talk local politics and, and business. Like all other conversations would come around, but the center of the conversations outside of why people were really there was usually about business and politics. And a lot of times people were talking, you know, establishing business plans while they were at church or during church meetings or whatnot. They'd actually have community meetings to where people had grievances to address and they would, um, you know, approach city council and whatnot, especially a lot of times the business and the religious community would do that. But the conversation, the, the way that people talk about sports and entertainment today, that's back during those times, people would talk about sports, but they would talk about, and back then obviously granted sports weren't as commercialized as they are today. But back in those days, it was just very normal for people to talk about getting a hookup for getting a good job and getting um, and starting a business or how you could support your local community business. It, it was just, it was a part of a code or whatnot. As Dr. Claude Anderson would call it, it was part of a code of conduct. And I love that code of contact, conduct. And I see that a lot of times people who immigrate to the United States of America. So if you are in the Detroit area, frequent this business. I always say this at the end of the day. Um, who you bank with and who you spend your money with holds more power than who you vote for. So you, most times people are spending money every day, whether they want, you know, you know, whether they want to or not. I mean, unless you're just a person that walks and doesn't have to eat, you're going to have to spend money eventually. 
So who do you spend your money with? That's a good question. Are you supporting your local family, friends, business? Are you looking at the local community businesses? That's another thing a lot of times people don't take into consideration. You know, they just, a lot of people just spend without doing any homework and without doing any research and whatnot. They just spend away and, you know, they feel good about giving their money to everybody else but their own. So I, I commend this man, continuously do the great work that he's doing. Um, a lot of times it's hard to do these efforts when you have a lack of not only um, financial support, but just a lack of customers. So, you know, if you can't obviously support the GoFundMe, then the crazy thing is just go, if you know you're gonna buy a loaf of bread or something like that, just go to the grocery store that somebody like him owns. It's a crazy concept, but it does work. It happens all the time on a regular basis, all right? So on that note, family, uh, do the great three free things, like, share, and subscribe. Always, like I always say, have a great day, make money moves, and you will live broke like a fool. As you see, the G999 Bitcoin is out and about. If you're interested in joining Gold Standard Partners, be my guest, sign up. The link is in the description, sign up for free. Basically, it's the opportunity for you to join another affiliate marketing organization. And if you're a crypto investor like me, it was just a no-brainer at the end of the day. But you're able to join a cryptocurrency um, organization to the point where you can make money off of other people purchasing Bitcoin all at the same time. If you sign up with my description, I will contact you directly and we'll have a conversation in, in depth and we'll go from there. If it's something you're interested in, cool. If not, then it's all good as well, all right? So I will see you guys later. And remember, you can't get fired if you own the company. I love the fact that more, after the stimulus package got passed, you've got uh, billions of people that actually have um, invested their money into the stock market and the cryptocurrency and to a multitude of things. So my, to my people that are being smart with their stimulus money, the ones that actually don't need it to get by, more power to you. If you need it to get by because you know you run on financial times, then good too. You you know either way, that's being used as a great thing as well. But this is the time period for people to start utilizing money, um, how to utilize everything else. You know, put it in a position where it can grow, and call it a day on that one. All right, family. So on that note, have a great day. Don't forget to check out the online store, support your local businesses, and I will see you guys later. Take care.